first, okay? Verse. On the verses, and then whenever it goes into on the Jericho Road, the chorus, the men will lead it, except for when you see each burden he'll bear. Okay? If you have a deep voice with him, you can sing the men's part, it's okay. And if you have a high voice, then you can sing the female's part, okay.
a Savior. And his son, it says in the beginning that he created man, that he created man in our image, the God, our God, and the Son. And the Son left the glory of the Father in heaven to come on this earth to suffer for us. He left the glory of the Father when He came down. And He says, I'm doing this for my people.
hearts today, Father, just to see who you are and to realize that the love that you have for us, and Father, we would we would grasp that, hold on to that love so tightly. And Father, that when we leave this place, we know that we are loved. Father, we know we are cherished. We know that, that everything that you've done, you've done for us. Father, I just ask you that you would just you would let, let us have a freedom in this place to, to let our hearts to let you have reign in our hearts, to, to let you have reign in our lives. And Father, just to open your word that you would reveal to us that one thing that we came here today looking for, that one piece of God that, that is missing in our lives, Father, that you would fill us with your spirit, with your love, with your kindness, with your joy. Father, as we walk out of this place, that we will be your people on fire for you in this world. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our you. And Father, we just ask you that you would just fill us with you today. We ask these things in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, as we're talking about love, as I was studying this past week and I've come across the, the love chapter, and, and the love chapter so often we hear this verse, these verses, uh, read at weddings and, and so forth and so on. But I, 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 was, I was reading this past week and, 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 and the weeks before as we talked about that I'm accepted and I, uh, you know, that when, when we go before the throne of God, that He accepts us for who He is. And then as we come to the point of knowing that we are broken, we are broken in the status that we walk in right now, we are broken people and that we need Jesus, that, that He completes us. When we stand before the throne of God, that God sees the blood of Christ in our lives and therefore He completes us. Yeah. And then last week we talked about my Lord, my God, is that God is God no matter what you think of Him, He is God, but is He your Lord? You know, as you read through the Scriptures, that when Jesus said that I lay my life down for my friends, I'm not just the Lord of their lives because sometimes a servant doesn't know what his Lord wants him to do. But I want you to know, this is Jesus speaking, I want you to know what I do is I go before you and I prepare a way. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And he says, I go to prepare a way for you. And not because I'm your Lord, but because I'm your friend. <laughs> What greater love than a man has is to lay his life down for his friends. And so the ultimate friend is Jesus Christ, the ultimate Savior, the ultimate, the, the, that, that, that payment that He paid for all of us is that when you stand before the throne of God is that you see God and God sees your Savior, Jesus. Because the payment for sin is death. And Jesus, He died on the cross for the payment of sin. And therefore, if you accept that payment of death that Jesus died on the cross for, when you stand before God, He sees that your debt has been paid. But if you do not accept Christ as your Savior and you stand before the throne of God, your debt has yet to be paid. And death is required. This week we're talking about, oh, how much He loves just the song that we were just worshiping God and going before His throne. How much He loves. And when I read 1 Corinthians 13, and you look at this and you apply Jesus right here in the very words that Paul wrote. He wrote, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Could you imagine that Jesus Christ come to do what He did without love? But no, yet He came and He said, I came to do all that I did because of love. Amen. Because of my love for you. I, I quoted that to you a while ago, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. He loved and He proved through His love with action. <laughs> Wait a minute there. I just said something that, that a lot of people, they have a hard time doing. A lot of times we have a hard time doing. Even as Christians, we have a hard time doing it. Is everything that I do, do I do it with love? If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all love of all I have, and if I deliver of my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Now think of Christ. Everything that He did, everything that He went through, He went through it with love. Amen. 
Just imagine when he went to the garden and he went to pray. And he, he went to pray in the garden because he knew what was coming. He asked his disciples to go with him and to pray. And his disciples fell asleep. He said, can you not pray with me for but one hour? Can you, can you not help me out just for one hour? And guess what? It broke his heart because his disciples kept falling asleep. It broke his heart because he needed his disciples there with him at this moment to help him get through what he was going through. And even in that, he loved them Amen. when they couldn't stay awake for one hour with him. You think about this, even if I offered my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. When Christ, when He went to the cross, He was up and up on the cross, is that when He did everything He did, just think about the thief that was behind Him. And He said, we deserve to be up here. This is the thief speaking. We deserve to be on the cross. You, Lord, have done nothing. Look at His word that He said. You, Lord, have done nothing to deserve this. But yet we have. Remember me. And what did Jesus say back to the thief hanging on the cross? For today, you will be with me in paradise. Today, you will be with me because of your belief. The other one, he was over there mocking Jesus. If you be Lord, if you be God, who you say you are, get yourself off the cross. You know, a lot of times as Christians, we say that. We might not say another word, but we say, okay, God, if you're really God and you want to prove yourself to me, do this or do that. Or if you do this, then I will do that. Uh oh. Everybody got quiet there for just a second. Like, he is talking to me. God, I thought I told you not to tell Brother Dana. <laughs> God, don't tell me what you're doing. Look at that very verb, next verse. Love is patient and kind and does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoice in the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. And love endures all things. Now think about that. We're going to go to John chapter 10 and that Jesus, He died willingly for His sheep. That when He went, He died willingly for us. And it said that, that the hired hand is not evil. And, and let's just turn to John chapter 10, verse 11. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Good job. I heard one amen. Amen. Anybody else speak now? You said John 10. John 10. Until we hear some amen. 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 Thank you. I don't know about y'all, but I'm already sweating. You need a little warm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 11. Jesus, this is he, Jesus speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He who has hired a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Hold on, stop right there. The hired hand. Jesus is God. He is God in flesh. Emmanuel. He was sent from the throne of God to live on this earth with us. He chose to come to earth for us. When He chose that sin. Amen. What can I do to pay for their sin? And God said it requires death. It requires a sacrifice. And He says, let me do it. Send me. Let me show my people how much I love them. He says, the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. <laughs> because the hired hand, when he sees danger, he runs from danger. But I'm here to stand for my people because I love my people. Amen. Remember we just read in 1 Corinthians 13 that love, that everything that Christ done, He done because He loved us that He wasn't just a clanging symbol. He wasn't just a, a noise that is being scattered throughout the earth. He was indefinitely here for us. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. Death. Sin requires death. <laughs> if the shepherd if the shepherd was removed 
It says that the hired hand would flee and the sheep would be scattered. You know, in another passage of Scripture, it says that the people, the people are as if they have no shepherd and they're scattered. It's because the people a lot of times have not realized that their shepherd, their Savior, loves them indefinitely, forever. Yeah. A lot of times we get to a position in our life and say, well, God, I've done this, and God, I've done that, and I'm, I'm no good, and, and you have no reason to love me. I can't make it up to you. I've gone so far back in life. And, and, and we just start saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And before too long, we realize you're exactly right. I can't. But the good shepherd, get this, is that he said he came to lay his life down for you. That through him, you would have power. Through him, you would have salvation. Through him, you would be accepted in your brokenness to the throne of God. Amen. He says that he is not a God that cannot be touched. That when we go before his throne, that you enter with freedom to come before Abba Father. You know what Abba Father means? My daddy. My daddy. You know, there's something about that. If you stand before your daddy and you can say, My daddy. He's my daddy. Papa Paul. He's mine. <coughs> King David. You all hear me talk about King David all the time. And he says, Who could be against me? For my God is for me. Amen. My God. Now y'all say that. My God. My God. Who's God? My God. Who's God? My God. I said who's God? My God. Who's God? My God. Who's God? My God. I said who's God? My God. Who's God? My God. Who's God? My God. Who's God? He's my God. He said he laid down his life for me that he would be my God, that he would take my sins, and that he would deliver me into his kingdom. He would lift me up a city upon a hill that would not that, that would shine into a valley below. He is my God. And this is what he's saying right here. If we would just grasp what he was saying. I am the good shepherd. I am known by my sheep. And my sheep know me. I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of his boat. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. Listen to the voice of God. You are God's. You do not belong to the world. Hallelujah. Bring it, brother. <laughs> how do we respond that He is a good shepherd? How do we, how do we reach that point of, of, of realizing what He has done for us? In, in John 11 and 36, is, uh, when, when Jesus, when He goes to Lazarus, that, that Lazarus was dead. In verse 34, this is John 11 and 34, it says, and He said, where have you laid him? And they're talking, talking about Lazarus. And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Get that. He wept. Why did He weep? Why did Jesus weep? Why did He start crying? Why did He have sympathy? Because He loved His people. And He's seen that they were, they were in torment. He's seen that they were sad. He's seen that, that they had such a compassion for Lazarus. Is that, that He wept for them. Get this. When they was at, this was at Lazarus' grave. When Jesus wept, it was His grief. His grief was so great. I want you to see what they said about him. It says, so the Jews said, see how he loved him? I think King James Version says, oh, how he loved him. See? Can you see the love of Jesus? Can you see that He loves you so much is when, when Jesus, when, when, he sees, when He sees our hurt, He sees our pain, He sees our joy. It even goes to the point that says that He captures our tears yes. because He loves you. He remembers why you cried every tear that you've ever cried in your entire life. He even goes to the point that says that He remembers the number of hairs on your head. 
Jews. That's how much He loves us. The Jews, they seen right here, they seen the love of Jesus. They seen that He had so much compassion that He did everything that He did out of love. Now, hold your finger right there. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What did we just read? If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clinging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have faith all so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It is not rude. It is not resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Think about that. Jesus, He is the, he is the uh, ultimate example. He said that He lays His life down for His friends. That He goes and He prepares a way. That if the way that He has prepared for us is that we have to follow Him in that way. Straight is the way, straight and narrow is the way that leadeth unto righteousness, but wide and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And it says there will be few there that find that way that is straight and narrow. It is sometimes hard to find. Because guess what? In 1 Corinthians we just read that everything that we do, we don't do for self-gain. Whoa. Uh-oh. <laughs> Brother Danny. Now you're talking about something there that just stepped on my toes. I need you to stop talking about that. <laughs> I need to rest. Is that okay? That's fine. <laughs> you, you know, so often, so often we hear this message, we hear these very verses, and we're like, Amen, preach it, brother. And then we walk out of these doors of this place, and we don't carry the message that God just delivered unto us. When you walk into the world, guess what? The Jews seen the love and compassion Jesus had. And what did they say about Him? Oh, how He loved Him. Is that what the world says about the church? No. Is that what the world says about you? Man, that guy loves Jesus. You can see that in everything that He does. Everything He does, He loves. He does that because He loves. Love Everything he does, he does because of love. Amen. When you walk into this world and you love people, that is the message that we have preached from the beginning. Jesus even goes to the point, he tells his disciple, I'm going to give you a new, a new law, a new commandment. When he give, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he says, Love one another as you love yourselves. Get this. Jesus, He says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Amen. There you go. Love one another as I have loved you because some people just don't love themselves. Whoa. Uh-oh. He made us step up our game a little bit. I, some people get down on themselves. They get down, <coughs> down on themselves. And they just don't completely love themselves anymore. But when we look at that passage, when he said, A new commandment I've given to you is that you love others <coughs> as I've loved you. What did Jesus do for us? He said, Right here, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. Amen. When the enemy comes, when the enemy comes to attack, the, the, the flock of sheep, or the, the sheep where they are in, uh, when the enemy comes to attack, is that the shepherd stands in defense for his sheep. Amen. That he goes to battle for them. Right. He lays his life down. That he stands in the gap for his sheep because he loves his sheep because they are defenseless. Amen. Yes, I just called you defenseless. All the armor that we have is not in self. All the armor that we have that we find in Ephesians chapter 6 is of God. Right. Amen. Your salvation, His Word, the Gospel, the good news. Everything we have is armor to be able to withstand 
the fiery darts of, the, of Satan. Amen. To be able to withstand everything that he gives. Now think about that for a second. That we may, able, we may be able to withstand what he throws at us, what he hurls at us. It doesn't say that we may be able to retreat from what Satan throws at us. We cannot be a people of retreat. We have to be a people that stands bold. Even in the, the, the Galatians, I believe it is, is that, that, that Paul writes that you would walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called. To walk worthy. Are you walking worthy? When you go into this world, is people saying that very thing about you? Oh man, he loves. Man, I, 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 he's got a love for him that is unending. That's, that's what we have to be. We have to be a people that go into this world and we don't love out of spot. And we don't love just because Brother Danny said, okay, this week I want you to go love somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? You know what? If that's that easy, I'm going to go home and go love my wife because she's easy to love. <laughs> that's the easy. It's easy to be a Christian at church. It's easy to love people at church. It's easy to give hugs at church. It's easy to do for people at church. But when we leave the church, what do you look like? My Lord, my God. We talked about that last week. God is God no matter what you believe about it. He created the heavens and the earth. And in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And get this, and everything that we have was made by God. Whoa. Everything we have was made by God. And so therefore, you have created nothing for yourselves in this life. God give it to you. Amen. He's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I went to work this week and I earned that paycheck. God give you the ability to go to work this week. Now, everything I've got at home, I'm all my own money. And, and uh, you know what? It's because the love I have for my wife will kept her around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this has been going a long time ago if I didn't have some Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the glue that stuck us together and we ain't been able to be inseparable since. Amen. <laughs> Man, when Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, he seen the pain that the people had and he wept because of his love. So if we think about this for a second, if, if he wept and he just said that he lays his life down for his sheep, I, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 17. We talked about this in the Capitol Church a little bit today. This is, this is the Lord's Prayer. A lot of people know the Lord's Prayer is our Father who art in heaven. I used to pray it ever before every football game we played. We play. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Well, this is Jesus' prayer to the Father about His people. And I want to start you off in verse 20. He's already prayed, Father, as I am in you and you are in me, and that those who are my disciples are in me, we are one together. Together. Now let's read what He writes about us. Verse 20. I do not ask for you alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Who is he talking about? Us. I pray for those who will believe because of the disciples. How about that? Underline that. John 17, 20. He's talking about you. I do not ask for these alone. He's talking about his disciples right there. But also for those who will believe. You can put your name right there. You can put me. He's praying for me. It goes on, he says, that they may all be, what is that word? One. One. Just as you, Father, in me, and I in you, they, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe. Amen. This is how we get the word into the world, is that they seen who Jesus was by his actions. They seen that he had compassion. They seen that he had love. They seen that he proved who he was. Even the Pharisees, even when Jesus was young and he went into the temple, and this is when Mary and Joseph, they had brought him at a young age, and he was sitting on the floor listening to the, the, the Pharisees, the law, those that studied the law, speaking, and Jesus started speaking also. And the Pharisees, they was like, how does he know so much? Because he is God in flesh. Amen. Man. 
He feels everything that we feel. He's been through everything that we've been through. But yet He is all knowledge. He is all knowing. He is God in flesh with us. Amen. He left the throne to come because He loved us. Amen. He came to give us freedom. He came to make us accepted in our brokenness. He come to love you how you are right now. So, oh, Brother Danny, I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Jesus makes you good enough. Well, oh, Brother Danny, I don't, I'm not a preacher. Well, you don't have to be a preacher. You have to live a life that shows the love of Christ. You have to be that city that He has set up on a hill. He has exalted. He has exalted. We have the problem of self exalted <laughs> that self-righteousness that I'm good enough because of what I've done I'm as good as you are <laughs> attitude well good thing you're as good as I am because I'm a sinner and without Jesus I'm going to hell <laughs> you're exactly right you're as good as me but what makes me accepted is because of Jesus Amen. the love that he has he says I am the ultimate friend I lay my life down for you because I love you. Do, you. do you know exactly the love that He has done for us, that He has given us? I have a spot highlight here. That what Christ has done for us, and, and, and before we turn some words, I want to I want to read you this: that we would know the love of our Lord Jesus Christ when He wept over sinners and praying for their conversion. Right here that we read in seventeen, when He couldn't even sleep the night before His crucifixion because He was praying. Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass by me. But if not, let your will be done. Amen. As he was escorted, betrayed by a kiss, as Peter stood and chopped the ear off of a soldier, and Jesus backed him up and said, No, 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 that's not who we are. And he put the ear back on the soldier. Even in that miracle, they delivered him. <coughs> That he'd be beat with a cat of nine tails. He'd be tortured. And that he would be delivered to the cross. And as they put a, a crown, they crowned him with thorns to mock him. I thought you said he was king. I thought you were the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And as they nailed him to the cross, he could have called on the Father to deliver him out of that state, but yet it was not finished. As they hung him on the cross, and as they pierced his side, and as he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it's to the point that the Father could not look upon his Son because of our sins. And he says, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And then to the point to say, when he said, it is finished, he said, my love, it is finished. Payment made. Amen. Payment made. <coughs> Could you imagine somebody writing a check for everything that you owe to the bank, your house, your car, your possessions, everything you have, your credit cards, and them writing a check and saying, payment made, and handing that to you and say, go pay your bills. You feel pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you feel when Jesus died on the cross for your sin? And he said, payment made. <coughs> payment for it. You owe no longer. <coughs> the ultimate the ultimate signature of love is he told the father I've done it. 
I've left your throne. Where I had it made. To rule at your right hand. I left the throne. To go pay for my people. Not just my people. My sheep. My friends. Amen. The ones that I love. <coughs> that I can bring them home one day. That when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and those that are living and those that are dead will be called up into the air. That I can gather them back up. When he went and he told his disciples, he said, I go prepare a place. I go prepare a place. And, and in that place there are many, many rooms for you. And he gave them a promise. He said, I will return to get you. Amen. I'm going to come back. My question to you is today, have you truly accepted the love of Christ? Yes. When He returns, <coughs> when He returns and He takes His people home, are you going to be one? Yes. yes. Have you accepted the love of the Father that when He sent His Son down the cross for you, His payment made? That's what I want you to think about. Because in your own state, you may be as good as the best Christian you've ever known. You may have that going through your mind. Well, I'm as good as they are. They need Jesus too. That's right. I need Jesus. For without Jesus, I am nothing. I'm nothing. <laughs> Last week we talked about making... Making Him our Lord. And for the Christian, that's the ultimate thing to do is in every aspect of your life, everything that you walk through in this world, is He your Lord? Do you look to Him for the answer? Or do you depend on something else? Some of us depend on our friends. That's not a bad thing, but we don't depend on Christ first. Some of us depend on our spouse. It's not a bad thing, but do you depend upon your Savior first? Some of us depend upon our money. Maybe not a bad thing, but do you depend upon Christ first? Because He says He is a jealous God. You put anything in front of Him, He doesn't like it. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to think about that. One question that I just asked you, and this is for all ages. If you're sitting in here and you hear my voice right now, this is for you. Have you surrendered your life to Christ? Have you accepted the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate payment? Is on your life paid in full, written? Is your name found <coughs> written in the Lamb's Book of Life? You say, oh, well, when I was 10 years old, I walked the aisle and I said a prayer at the front of the church. Yeah, I'm saying I'm good enough. Or do you say when I was three years old, I was sprinkled and baptized and my sins were washed away. That's good enough. The ultimate sacrifice that Christ died on the cross for is that we would look like Jesus. Look like Him. When I got saved in my, that old man, that life that I used to live, did it pass away? And the new man that Christ has resurrected in him, is it alive? Do I do everything that I do because the love I have for others? Because the love that Christ gave me? Is Jesus the love of your life? Is Jesus your Savior? If you can't honestly and truthfully say yes, He's calling you right now. He's calling you to His throne. He's calling you to His love. Because just like Lazarus, He weeps over you because of His compassion.
I wouldn't want any, <coughs> any of my friends, my family, to go before the throne of God. And God look at you and say, the payment hasn't been made. Death is required. I love you in this room. I love you enough to come before you and say, you need Jesus. There's no other way to the throne of God into His kingdom to live for an eternity without Him. I love you enough that you may not even talk to me ever again because I was too much in your face this morning. But I love you so much that I want to tell you that my Jesus is the only way. I love you so much that I'm willing to go with you to the throne of God and introduce you to my Jesus. All it takes is one step. All it takes for you to commit to come to me and say, Brother Nate, I want to know Jesus. I want to make Him my Savior. I want to experience everything that you talked about today. I want to experience going into the world and having a love that I don't, it ain't my love, it's God's love. It's, it's unconditional. He doesn't tell you to be perfect. He doesn't tell you to change the things that you're doing in your life. He tells you to come to me as you are right now. I love you. I want you to leave your spot right now. If God has spoken to you to go to His, to His altars to pray for somebody that's on your mind. To go and pray for yourself. Go and pray for anything that's going on in your life right now. Or, or maybe even a family member's life. Whatever's going on in your life right now, God wants to hear your voice. He says, I'm jealous for my people. I want to hear their voice. What better place to hear His voice than for Him to hear your voice is at His altar. about the sickness that's been going on in people's lives in our church. He's, he's concerned about uh, your job. He's concerned about your relationships. He's concerned about your family. Or he's concerned about everything in your life right now. He's concerned. Will you give it to Him? It's as easy as this going to His office and saying, God, <coughs> be merciful <coughs> On a sinner such as I. Father, have mercy upon me. Pour your grace out of my life. Because I do not deserve you.
serious to think about that one person that needs Christ so very much in their life right now. Maybe they're saved, maybe they're not saved. Maybe they're going through something in this life that's just too too much to bear. And man, they just they need Jesus. They need the Holy Spirit. They need God so much in their life right now. That they maybe be losing hope. Maybe they're losing faith. They're losing sight. They don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They don't see the good shepherd in their life right now. We're going to pray for you. And when I get to the point where I ask for the Father to help, I want you to say their name. Just everybody all at once because God is here. Every one of us at the exact same time. Maybe it's you that you need to say your own name because you need the Father's help. Lord, Father, we come to you right now. And Father God, we want to lift up to you. Father, whatever they're walking through, whatever they're faced with, whatever circumstances going on in their life, Father, whether they need life 
put in them. Father, whether they need peace, they need strength, they need joy. Father, whatever it is that they're walking through right now, we just pray to the I Am that You are everything to each and every one of us. We pray to You right now that You will show us the way that You prepared. Father, that we would be able to walk worthy in this world, the vocation that You've called us with, Father, that we would be able to withstand everything that Satan quarrels at us, that, Father, that everything we are, we are because of You. And, Father, as we leave this place today, I just ask You that people would see the life that You've put in us. Father, that we would bear a fruit that, that people would, they would see that and they would want to know how we got that. And we could tell them because of You. Father, I pray over every person here right now that, Father, that You would just make Yourself so clear, so visible to them right now. Father, the questions that's going through their minds, the, the things that's going through their heart, Father, just whatever they're dealing with right now, I pray for them that You would step in and show them the way. And Father, most of all, I ask You for Your forgiveness. Father, your forgiveness for drifting away. Your forgiveness for, for the sin that we don't even know that we commit on a daily basis. Father, your forgiveness just because sometimes I let the flesh pull rather than the spirit. Father, I pray as we come together as, as a people that you would see who we are and Father, that you would be pleased with our worship. Father, I just ask you that as we leave this place, we would be full of your joy. And Father, we love you. We praise you. And we ask you that you would just keep us safe. Father, for we ask these things in Christ's most precious name. And all God's children said, Amen. Before you get up and leave, I have one uh, uh, desire that you can do is Angie is back here in the back. And if she does not have your address, then I would ask you to go by her, give her your address before you leave. Because we might want to send you a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Angie's the one that sends stuff out, so who knows what she's sending. <laughs> to her if you do not mind. So we can just, you know, if you miss or something, we can drop you a little letter in the mail saying we missed you. Or if we want to come visit you and eat your food, we know where you live. <laughs> amen. I know where most of y'all live, though. So, <laughs> amen. amen. But uh, feel free to, to, to love on one another. Tell if you if you see somebody here, you do not know. This is what our church is about. It's about, it's about knowing one another before we leave this place. So everybody that has come for the first time or been here every time, we want you to intermingle. So... Uh, and you're off. <laughs>